Good evening, Coach Slack, uh, at his evening reading session. I've um, been dying to get into these, uh, you know, share with you a little bit about the things that I get into uh, reading-wise. And so tonight uh, we're going to get into the uh, ascetical homilies of St. Isaac the Syrian. Um, you know, and the book is dedicated to uh, two blessed and venerable elders, one of which is Joseph the Hezekast, right there. Recently canonized and made Saint Joseph, and also uh, Elder Euronimos the Clairvoyant, right there. So uh, the book was dedicated to these two elders, Elder Joseph, uh, Saint Joseph, uh, is a contemporary elder, uh, died in 1959. Um, I personally have a great uh, affinity for uh, Elder Joseph. Um, recently also finished a book called My Elder Joseph the Hezekiah, written by Elder Frem, who recently uh, reposed in the deserts of Arizona in a monastery he founded called St. Anthony's. Uh, previous to that, uh, he was the abbot um, of a monastery on Mount Athos called Philotheo. And uh, previous to that... Um, he had lived with Elder Joseph on the Holy Mountain, in the deserts of the Holy Mountain, uh, Caso Calivia. And then eventually, they, as he got older, uh, Elder Joseph, they moved to uh, Neaskiti. So. <clears throat> but uh, I want to point out what Euronimus the Clairvoyant says about Isaac uh, the Syrian. Forsake not Isaac. Every day, one page of Abba Isaac. Not more. Isaac is the mirror. There you will behold yourself. The mirror is so that we may see if we have any shortcoming, any smudge on our face, in order to remove it, to cleanse ourselves. If there is a smudge on your face or on your eyes, in the mirror you will detect it and will remove it. In Abba Isaac you will behold your thoughts, what they are thinking, your feet where they are going, your eyes if they have light and see. There you will find many sure and unerring ways in order to be helped. One page of Isaac a day, in the morning or at night, suffice it that you read one page. So that's what uh, Elder Euronimos, the clairvoyant, has to say about St. Isaac uh, the Syrian. And then, just real quick for uh, historical context, uh, in the translator's introduction, he gives a quick uh, historical, well, his historical account's are actually very long, but I'm just going to point out a, a couple quick things. Uh, St. Isaac was born in the early 7th century in a province on the northeastern coast of the Arabian, Pen Arabian Peninsula. He received a sound education in the sacred scriptures and patristic writings and became a Cenobitic monk and a sacred teacher. In the year 676, he was taken uh, back to Persia and ordained a bishop of Nineveh. After serving as a bishop for five months, he withdrew and retired to the mountains where he led a life of prayer and stillness for many years until old age compelled him to enter the monastery where he ended his days and was buried. So we're talking about a 7th century uh, monastic um, who uh, seems like the uh, church tried to ordain, you know, to make a bishop and uh, just wasn't his calling, apparently, because he withdrew into uh, prayer and solitude. But, uh, you know, uh, God blessed him to uh, give us these writings. So, you know, maybe that was the path for him. And look now for 14th centuries, um, his homilies are continuing to help many find peace and salvation. So I think that's important. So tonight we'll get into uh, just one homily. Uh, like Elder Euronimo said, just read one page a day. Um, <clears throat> and I talked to a monk um, <clears throat> who had uh, lived with him. And he said that uh, every day they would read one page from uh, Abba Isaac. And... It wasn't like even random. Like they didn't just flip open the book. It was like wherever they were, you know, they just kept reading one page a day. And whatever they read, he said, it, within that one page would directly, they could relate to just from even that day. It would directly affect them um, as important to something they encountered within the, the context or the experiences of that single day. And so I always remembered that also. So uh, homily 36 is called On the Modes of Virtue. <clears throat> and I'll just point out some things here. Um, so one thing that stuck, struck out to me on uh, homily 36 here was, he says, <clears throat> A small affliction born for God's sake is better before God than a great work performed without tribulation. For affliction willingly born brings to light the proof of love. 
but a work of leisure proceeds from a self-satisfied conscience. So, you know how Elder Hieronymus uh, calls it a mirror, a reflection of our, our own self when you're reading St. Isaac. You know, this one really stuck out to me because, you know, as a uh, husband and a father and, uh, these, you know, a coach, uh, these types of things, um, you know, I'm always trying to figure out how to prove my love, you know, in a sense. Um, but here he's, he's pointing out, affliction willingly born brings to light the proof of love. So I think that's important, you know, um, affliction willingly born. You know, if you're if you're willingly accepting that for something that you love, uh, that there's no greater proof of love than that. Because even you could do something great for someone, you know, uh, a, but a work of leisure. But maybe you enjoy doing what you did. Maybe you're an artist and you enjoy painting and you, you paint the, the person you love a painting. You know, it's a wonderful gift. It's a wonderful offering. But, it, it, you know, something coming from struggle, like maybe bearing what they love, you know, like, you know, as husbands, if we want to prove to our wives that we love them, you know, don't try to convince them to love what we love. Maybe every now and again, um, you know, bear, <laughs> bear the affliction of enduring what they love. <laughs> so I think that's what uh, Abba Isaac, I don't mean to laugh at it, but, uh, you know, I think that's important. And then also about halfway through the uh, homily, uh, this he says a prayer. Uh, I really love the beginning of the prayer. Make me worthy, O Lord, to know Thee, that I might also love Thee, not with that knowledge which springs from the exercise of study, accompanied by dispersion of mind, but make me worthy of that knowledge whereby the mind, in beholding Thee, glorifies Thy nature in divine vision that steals from the mind the awareness of the world. So I love the beginning of that prayer because <clears throat> he's pointing out two kinds of knowledge. Um, make me worthy, O Lord, to know thee that I might also love thee, not with that knowledge which springs from the exercise of study. So when we're studying, you know, the exercise of study accompanied by dispersion of mind. So the knowledge that we gain within the context of the world comes through our senses, you know, which is only interpreting the things of the world. Whereas he goes on to say, but make me worthy of that knowledge whereby the mind in beholding thee glorifies thy nature in divine vision. So this is a supranature, supranatural knowledge. You know, the knowledge that we can study, you know, scientific knowledge, uh, cause and effect, taste, touch, smell, those types of uh, knowledge things. Um, you know, exercise of study accompanied by dispersion of mind. But this other kind of knowledge, <clears throat> whereby the mind in beholding thee glorifies thy nature and divine vision that steals from the mind the awareness of the world. So when you reach this type of knowledge or experience it even just for a fleeting moment, you are in the world physically, but you're not of the world. You know, you've, your spirit, your soul um, has gotten contact with this other knowledge he's pointing out here. Um, and you lose awareness of the world as we would know it in that, um, you know, some people would say euphoria, uh, but more accurately, probably a, a, a theoria, a theoria. So, and then uh, just at the conclusion here, he concludes with this. It is hard to convey anything sublime to one who is still a beginner and an infant in stature. Woe to thee, O city, when thy king is a child. Whoever subjects himself to God is near to having all things subject to him. When a man knows himself, the knowledge of all things is granted to him. For to know oneself is the fullness of the knowledge of all things. And uh, there's a subnote here that says uh, in the Syriatic uh, text, it adds here, <clears throat> Since as all things are contained in you, the knowledge of all is contained in the knowledge of yourself. So, when a man knows himself, the knowledge of all things is granted to him. For no, to know oneself is the fullness of the knowledge of all things. In the submission of your soul, all things will be submissive unto you. At the time when humility reigns in your manner of life, your soul will submit it, herself to you. And along with her, all things will be submitted to you. Because the peace of God is born in your heart. But so long as you are outside it, you will be unceasingly persecuted, not only by the passions, but also by accidents. So, this is important. 
He's pointing out how important humility is here. At the time when humility reigns in your manner of life, your soul will submit herself to you. And in the submission of your soul, he points out, all things will be submissive unto you. So when you're in control of your inside, your soul, you know, your thoughts, these types of things, all things are submitted to you. And the peace of God is born in your heart. But so long as you are outside of this, you will be unceasingly persecuted, not only by the passions, but also by accidents. Truly, O Lord, if we do not humble ourselves, Thou dost not cease to humble us. Real humility is the fruit of knowledge, <clears throat> and true knowledge the fruit of trials. Real humility is the fruit of knowledge, and true knowledge the fruit of trials. So, you know, humility, knowledge, you know, worldly knowledge, otherworldly knowledge, you know, um, these are important things that he points out. But uh, it starts with humbling ourselves. There's no doubt about it. And that's what he ends the homily with. Real humility is the fruit of knowledge. And true knowledge, the fruit of trials. So, <clears throat> a little bit of, uh, you know, one page of Abba Isaac. Uh, not my knowledge, just something I'm trying to share with others um, in my evening reading. So, I hope you enjoy this. And share with me about your readings. And uh, we can grow together. All right, thank you. Stay strong, stay stable, stay fit, stay safe. Love you, bye.